A good Souls like is hard to find. Middling to bad Souls like I like pigeon shit on Nelson's column, but a really good one is a pretty rare thing. Outside of what From Software themselves produce, the majority are little more than pretenders. At present, it's hard to say exactly where Moon Scars from Black Mermaid and Humble Bundle will fall on that spectrum, but based on this early preview build, it certainly appears to understand the assignment. See, it's not just a case of being hard or of losing currency on death or being about as easy to understand as a book written backwards and upside down with half the pages missing that's covered in blood and on fire. It's not about shortcuts and branching pathways or even boss fights with huge walls of limbs and swords. You need all of those things in just the right measure to get the job done. Moon Scars has most of it down pat. I can't comment yet on what the bosses will be because there isn't one in this build. Well, unless you count the fight against a doppelganger of yourself that closes up the preview. Though in the category of being obtuse almost to the point of total obfuscation, Moon Scars has most other souls likes beaten. This build is a work in progress and the opening cutscene is still a rough pencil sketch with missing scenes, but I got the gist after a couple of runs. Your character is Grey Irma, a clayborn built as part of an army by the sculptor, a godlike being who can cast human souls into what are essentially golems. You awaken with a hunger that can only be sated by killing living things and absorbing their ichor. Ichor acts as a resource for healing and using special moves and spells, but it's also the essence of the Clayborn. It is built by slaying enemies, and so immediately there's an emphasis on being offensive, which is great because the combat is bloody excellent. Irma has a light and heavy attack, a dodge, dash and a parry, but she can also unlock spells such as the shockwave which is used for knocking enemies back and breaking thin walls. After a while you'll reach the moon forsaken workshop, the hub where the sculptor created you. Here you can craft a new clayborne vessel called a mold which strengthens you and gives you access to a special attack in the form of a secondary weapon. There are several and you seem to be offered three at random each time. I saw a spear, a hammer, a lance and a longsword. These special attacks do a great deal of damage and add a debuff to enemies such as damage over time or slowed movement. To reach the Moon Forsaken Workshop, you access huge ornate dark mirrors. They allow you to fast travel and unlock abilities by spending Bone Powder, which is a currency dropped on death. As with any souls lock, you must return to your grave after dying, but if you die again on the way, all your Bone Powder will be lost. If you lose your grave, the Moon grows hungry, which is the way the game explains that enemies get stronger if you die without reaching your grave. You need to perform a Moon Rite at a dark mirror to reset the effect. The first time you use a new dark mirror you must sacrifice your current mold to do so. At this point a doppelganger will form and remain at the mirror with all your items and currency. If you want it all back you'll need to go and kill it. It's an interesting mechanic that forces you to think before blindly jumping into any point of respite. If anything, Moonscars may have a few too many mechanics. You can also build Spite, which unlocks temporary buffs for the current mold. You can get an instant heal on death, increase your damage or crit chance, boost your icor reserves. Each upgrade is essential, but they don't stay with you after death. Add to this the items and charms you can find and equip and the huge tree for spells and there's potential here for varying builds. How deep this goes I can't say for sure yet. The preview is less than an hour of the game and I got the sense it'll be pretty big. The area I played had a metroidvania feel with a number of shortcuts and elevators to activate that give you quicker access between dark mirrors. Enemies respawn on death and when you use a mirror to travel and I came across a few doors I couldn't access at all in the preview build. The art style is gorgeous. The palette is muted greys and flashes of red with occasional shocks of colour from spells and enemy attacks. It's hugely atmospheric and the animation is just excellent. Irma moves with a brutal grace. She feels like something inhuman built to fight and every strike of her greatsword has a palpable weight to it. The writing is a little overcooked though. It's all very grim dark and lofty, although the sculptor's pet cat will often appear to offer advice and snarky witticisms which at least adds some levity. You know when a game has grabbed you when you feel genuinely sad that the preview build has come to an end. Moon Scars has the potential to be another grime or blasphemous or even another Sultan Sanctuary. Currently it's hard work to pick apart the story elements and I've no idea how the boss fights are going to work, if there are other weapons to unlock or what kind of builds will be possible. But what I've seen in the preview build absolutely has my attention and without a doubt Moon Scars is one to watch in 2022.